can you feel the fear? Are you afraid? Three years ago, I was living with my then boyfriend in a one bedroom apartment in a little mountain town. It was a half a basement unit, so the bottom of all of our windows were level with the ground outside. It was an older apartment, and not all of the windows could fully lock. One day, my boyfriend came home from work while I was laying on the sofa and immediately ran up to the window near me and looks out of it frantically. He then went to every other window in the house and then walks around outside, looking in the windows. When he came back from his confusing exploit, I asked him what the hell was going on and why he was being such a spaz. I think I just walked in on a dude looking at you in the window. He took off as I walked up, he told me. This was naturally very unsettling, but after discussing it and considering the time of day, it was about 2 p.m., and the number of people out and about around the complex at the time. We came to the conclusion that it was just a curious neighbor or someone passing by happening to glance in. With that, we forgot about it. If only that was the end. For the next couple of months, odd stuff happened here and there. Someone would knock on the door occasionally, and then when I went to go answer it, there was no one there. I'd find things in my apartment that I wasn't familiar with, or things like clothing items that would vanish. I didn't really think twice about any of it until one night. My boyfriend and I were arguing around 1 or 2 in the morning, and we were being a little loud. We were standing in the kitchen face to face, his back was to an open window with the blinds up halfway, and I was facing it. Amidst our arguing, I glanced behind him at the window thinking I saw the reflection of my face in it. The window was open. It wasn't my face. There was a man with his face pressed almost up against the window screen watching us. Given the fact that we were arguing and it was late, I thought for a moment it may have been a concerned neighbor walking up to the window to speak to us. A main walkway for the complex was right on the other side of the window, so I spoke to him. Hello, can I help you? I asked a little aggressively, thinking a neighbor was intruding on in our privacy. He responded to this, staring, unwavering and cold, right at me. His face did not change expression. He didn't blink or move. He just looked at me in a way that I've never been looked at before or since. In this instant, I also realized that because of the window being level with the ground, the only way the man's face could be where it was is if he was laying on the ground outside the apartment or crouched and contorted to look into the window. My heart sank. I buried my face in my boyfriend's chest and I closed my eyes in fear. My boyfriend, up until this point, thought I was messing with him. When I buried my face in his chest, only then did he say, Is there really somebody at the window? I whispered to him yes. He felt my fear, and took a moment before he turned around. By the time that he did, the man was gone. It was at this point I started to think about all the little odd occurrences that I had been experiencing. I assumed the worst. I filed a police report with his description, and my brother loaded my apartment up with weapons to protect me, or at least inform this peeping Tom that I was armed. After that night, myself, my boyfriend, and my brother were on high alert. There were a couple of times when my brother came over that he saw this sketchy dude hanging around, and even one time saw him at my window. He tried to follow him discreetly, but the guy took off running as soon as my brother stepped in his direction. The last night I had an experience with this man. I was sitting home alone, on my sofa. My boyfriend was at work at a restaurant about two blocks away. He had picked me up from work an hour earlier. We had sat on the sofa together a little while when we got home. Then he kissed me and left for work, locking the door behind him. After he left, 
I continued to sit on the couch on Reddit for a while in silence. After about an hour of me sitting in silence, I heard a door creak open. It's a small apartment, so you see the bedroom and bathroom doors from the couch. All I had to do was lean a little to the left. I assumed that it was one of my cats coming out of my bedroom, so you can imagine my shock when I lean over and see the door that's opening as the door to the water heater and small closet storage space. I look to my right and see both my cats sleeping soundly at the other end of the couch. I looked back to the door, and it's still creaking open very slowly. It opened enough for me to see it. A set of fingers wrapped around the door, easing the door ever so gently open, as quietly as possible. That was going to be a no for me. I ran my ass barefooted out of the door into the snow, and down the street to my boyfriend's work. I called the cops. When everyone was back to check out the apartment, he was, of course, gone. After that, my boyfriend and I packed our shit, went to stay with my parents, and six months later moved a thousand miles away from that town. That was the end of it. I initially found Let's Not Meet around the same time that I was trying to find other stories similar to mine, or people to talk to who had experienced something like this. I had intended to write my story here eventually, and I figured after this week's events, I had to. I live a thousand miles away from where this all happened. So part of me thinks that there's no way this person could have found me, but last week, I heard a knock on my front door of my apartment. I was expecting a package, so I figured it was just a delivery driver and didn't answer. I'd go to get the package later. They then knocked again, and then again. The third one made me feel uneasy, so I waited a good 20 minutes to check the door. When I did, there was no package, no note, nothing. Someone was just knocking. Although it made me uneasy, I didn't initially think back to my stressful situation in my last town. Then two days ago, I went out to get groceries. I have a little patio and I go out in the mornings just to chill or check on plants. And I've been known to leave it unlocked in the day on accident. Never thought it was such a huge deal. That is, until I came home from the store two days ago, and the deadbolt to my apartment was locked. The deadbolt that can only be locked from the inside of the apartment. I assumed that someone had robbed me because I dumbly left my patio unlocked. I called my sister. I called my current new boyfriend. I waited for people to be with me, and I went into the apartment, through the sliding glass patio door. Nothing was out of place. Nothing of value was taken. At this point, my heart sank. Nothing was touched. Nothing stolen. Someone was inside my apartment just because they wanted to be inside my apartment. I told my boyfriend about my stalker, and he's not taking this shit lightly, like my past boyfriend. I filed a police report. We checked for the recording devices and cameras. He put up Nest cameras all over the place, and we went on high alert. I really hope this is just a coincidence, but if this man really followed me across multiple state lines, there's no one on earth I'm less interested in meeting. This event happened in January of 2013 when I was 17 years old. I was a guy living in Portland, Oregon. Throughout my high school, I was always very active in cycling. I would often find myself cycling early in the morning and late at night, either coming back from school or from a friend's house. I didn't yet have a driver's license, so cycling was the only viable option for me, if the weather permitted so. I lived in a safe area of the city and had good lighting, so I was never afraid of cycling in the dark. However, one night during my senior year of high school, this would all change. The distance from my high school to my house was about 6 kilometers sticking to main roads, but about 4 kilometers taking shortcuts through a nice wooded park. I had finished a long music rehearsal and I was tired. It was already past 10 p.m. and I was feeling very tired. I decided to take a shortcut home. 
although the park can be scary due to the lack of lighting, I have taken the shortcut before it dark. During the summer, there's usually some crowds still at the park. This was winter, and the park had a very different feeling being completely dark with no one around. At around 10.20, I took a left turn from the lit road into the wooded park. Already the scenery went from serene to frightening. I could get through the park in around 10 minutes. However, halfway through the dark park, I happened to run into two guys wearing dark colored hoods. Aside from the fact that they were not wearing reflective clothing, they looked threatening and scary. I could not see their faces very well until I was well within 20 meters from them. As I passed, I heard them quietly talking about something. Suddenly, both guys pulled out large knives from their jackets. My heart sank immediately and my adrenaline started to kick in. One of the guys starts to yell and curse words at me, and both charged at me wielding their knives. I was prepared for the worst and thinking that I could end up dead and dumped somewhere. Fortunately for me, I was able to see the path that led to a lit street, and I quickly cycled fast out of the park. Normally I would get tired since it was a good 300 meters to the busy road. As I got onto the lit road, I saw some light traffic and immediately felt much safer. About 15 seconds later, the guys walked out of the park and pretended not to see me. I let out a sigh of relief as they went in the opposite direction that I went. I eventually reached home at around 1040. I ended up not telling my parents about this, as I would have gotten in very serious trouble with them. After a few days, the horrifying thought of almost being murdered in a desolate park started to vanish from my mind. I never went through that park at night again, and I didn't even go through that park for a few months after that. Just a week later, some very horrific news ended up shocking my neighborhood. A very popular junior from my high school was violently stabbed and killed in a brawl. Him and his friends was doing some shopping at a store when three male teenagers started to cause him trouble and stole some items. Then he confronted the three guys. They started getting violent, and a large fight broke out between them. Those guys ended up stabbing the poor boy multiple times, and he was rushed to the hospital. Sadly, he succumbed to his injuries. He was on the football and basketball teams in my school it was a very kind-hearted person in general. His death devastated the entire community. A few days afterwards, I come to read the news and was met with a horror and disgust. Two of those three teenagers were the exact same guys I encountered at the park late at night. Despite being both 18 years of age, they looked like they were at least in their late 20s. Those three teenagers were quickly identified by many of the schoolmates as they graduated a different high school a year before, but they were very active on social media. They were both sentenced 20 years to life in prison. I don't know what would have happened if I wasn't athletic and I wasn't able to outrun those hooded guys. I have been in fights before and I've been beaten up before. I have never been so scared in my life before this traumatic event. So to the creepy guys who were either intimidating me or trying to murder me, Let's not ever meet again. So a quick backstory. I worked at a decent sized grocery chain and had many positions, mainly in supervisor and management. One department I managed had a door that was, for lack of a better term, the computer room, and we had a corporate employee who would come in and fix things the head of IT. I'll call him Jeff. At first he would talk to me non-stop and follow me around the store, but I thought he was just super friendly. He eventually added me on all social media and would message me non-stop, which I thought was weird since he was in corporate. That's when it started to get weird vibe from him and my gut was telling me to stay away from him. He then started to kind of talk dirty to me so I ignored him until he came in a few days later to do some repairs and tried to get me to go into the computer room and mess around with him, and he would try to fill me up. 
He even started writing hardcore BDSM erotica with me in it and would send it to me. I know I should have reported that, but I wanted to move up to a really fun position so I wanted to just lay low for a while and figured that he would get the message when I told him to back off. He didn't. He kept telling me that he was in love with me. I blocked him on social media after that. Fast forward about six months and I got the position that I really wanted. A friend of mine who worked in an old department came up to me and said, Heads up, Jeff is here and he's looking for you. I was like, great. About an hour went by, and since he hadn't found me, I thought I was in the clear. But no. I was sweeping around my bar, yes, a bar in the grocery store, and I heard I'd masturbated to you about a dozen times in the past few months. I turned around, and sure enough, it was Jeff. So I was like, dude, you're married. I have a boyfriend. You need to leave me alone. I then walked away to keep sweeping, and he cornered me near the bar and said, I want to bend you over the counter and fuck you. Luckily, an assistant store manager noticed how creepy he was being. I'll call him Sean, and he's awesome. He came up to the bar and said, Hey, can you come around the bar? I want to show you our sales. And Jeff, I thought you were done here. So Jeff left, and Sean told me that he noticed he was being creepy and asked me what he said. I told him he was just hitting on me to avoid conflict, and he said, fucking hate that guy. I've always gotten a perb vibe from him. A few minutes later, the store manager, I'll call him Mike, and we rarely got along, came up to me and said, I understand that attractive young women in an alcohol setting can be treated disrespectfully. If Jeff said anything to you that was sexual, and I know he did, I need to know about it, and told me to tell him exactly word for word what Jeff said to me. And so I had to look Mike in the eye and say the exact same thing that he said to me, word for word. So yikes, I'm cringing thinking about it. Then I had to write down exactly what was said, the times, etc., and give it to Mike. I'm honestly surprised anyone can understand my handwriting. It's happened to me before, and the situation brought back memories, and I was super shaky. About a week later, a group of people from corporate HR came to the store, and I had to go through the whole process yet again. They confirmed with me that they saw how close he was on the cameras and that they've had a few complaints about him before. A few months later, all the systems went down. Nothing could be ordered, internet was fucking up, etc. And apparently they believed it was because of a recent IT employee termination. It was eventually fixed, of course, and he was under investigation. I recently left that company, left all the shitty memories behind, and I thought I was done with everything. About two months ago, I was on Instagram looking at who had viewed my stories. All of a sudden, I saw Jeff's name. He had multiple accounts to try to stalk me. So I blocked all of them, and more kept popping up weekly. My boyfriend finally messaged him and told him that he was going to report him if he didn't stop. He didn't reply to him, but I think he got the message. Creepy IT stalker, let's not meet again. And please... Stay off social media. Did you like that video? Well, there's more where that came from. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and follow me on Instagram. Links below in the description. Also, if you have a story to submit to the channel, link will be in the description for r slash sn stories. I'll see you next time.